Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wiley Drake Show, live from Paducah, Kentucky. And I'm going to talk to the preacher gets in the book. Y'all want to shut me up? Just start, and I'll get out of the way and let the camera be on me. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the center attraction there. You see what the center is? That's the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to do a quick commercial. You want to know about a cross? There's a cross being built in Branson, Missouri, 300 feet into the air. You'll be able to ride an elevator up that cross to the 17th floor and go out and look out over all of the Branson hillside there and see the glorious handiwork of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That cross will be there. be free. I'm not going to charge you to go. If you want to find out more about it, go to the BransonCross.com. BransonCross.com. And ladies and gentlemen, i got to get my notes so I know what I'm talking about. I'm at the 30th anniversary, UBC, 30th anniversary. And our host is Pastor Homer Fletcher. He's the host pastor of Victory Baptist Church. And the title of this meeting all week long is The War on Christianity in America. We've all heard missionary stories. We've all heard of people being persecuted for Christ. And now it has come home. As my daddy used to say, the chickens have come home to root. Baptist, independent, fundamental, all of us, southern, western, eastern, northern, we have dropped the ball, and the devil has taken over. We've got to take it back. We are at war, folks. It's a war between good and bad. The good guys aren't winning right now. The bad guys are. If you don't believe that, check out Houston. You don't believe that? Check out Vegas. You don't believe that? Check out where your church is open. Look in my church on Sunday morning. You'll see more seats vacant than you see seated. <coughs> Something wrong with that picture, folks. We didn't put in too many pews. Our people left. And most churches, I guarantee you, when they put this church in here, when they put these pews in, they didn't put in more pews than they needed. But I dare say, this church or any other church, don't have the pews filled. They ought to be full. Choir loss ought to be full. And if we'd have revival, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. With that in mind, I'm going to sit down and be quiet. And you will see the cross in the middle of the picture.
anybody glad in the Lord tonight? Amen. Oh, let me try that again. Anybody happy in the Lord tonight? Amen. All right, stand up. We're going to sing 177. Great old song, Victory in Jesus.
Thank you. You may be seated. Great singing. And now Melissa is going to come and sing for us. Thank you. 
Pastor Fletcher. Amen. Nothing like some good uh, singing to get your heart ready for the preaching. Amen. 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 You come tonight for preaching? Is that what you come for? Yes. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to have a good meeting this uh, year. I'm looking forward to all the speakers that's going to be speaking. Uh, of course, Brother Everett Sullivan Ramsey tonight. Uh, he'll be telling you about his books and he's going to tell the story of the First Padlock Church in America theme of our meeting this year is the war on Christianity in America. How many of you believe that there is a war in Christianity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There's a great assault taking Amen. place on Christians. Amen. Go back to the history of this country you see what the Christian has done to make America so great. And today we're trampled under feet. You know, I believe that uh, when the scripture says when the salt has lost its faith, that's right. right. Good for nothing. That's right. You know what's happened? I'm afraid the church is lost the Savior. We're being trampled under the feet of men. We, we need to get back to God. Get back to the Bible. Bible preaching. I've got a verse here I want to give you. I, God gives me verses from time to time. And when God gives me something, I, I dwell on it for a long time. I meditate on it. Psalm 71, 18 said, Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, Amen. and thy power to everyone that is to come. What you're looking at mostly tonight is the old gray-headed warriors that fought some battles. But we've got some young ones coming up. And uh, I, I know that they're going to pick up the sword and carry the battle on. Amen? Amen. We've got to have it if we're going to survive to, uh, to have what God would have us to have if we ever turn this country back. So let me give you a little schedule of uh, what we've got going. Tuesday in the morning, in the morning we will start at 9 o'clock. And uh, we're going to have testimonies from uh, those that were in... Nebraska at the battle there at the Faith Baptist Church and uh, also those that was in Covington, Georgia uh, will be testifying and talking about the experiences and just having a good time of uh, reunion and just getting to refresh, re know each other again after the many years. Uh, sometimes you, uh, you, you recognize people but you can't call their name. But you've been learning about battle with them. So we'll get that renewed tomorrow. We're going to feed you lunch in the evening meal. 12 o'clock, we're going to eat. I want to warn all preachers, stay on your time. Do not intrude upon another person's time. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, because we're going to feed you at 12 o'clock, whether you're through preaching or not. We're <coughs> going to eat. Hallelujah. Our workers do have to get the food prepared, dishes put away, and start the evening meal. We'll, we'll feed you the evening meal. And I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to get some of the best Kentucky redneck food you've ever eaten. I guarantee it. You're going to enjoy uh, the food, if nothing else. If you don't enjoy it, uh, you, 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 you're just not a hillbilly. That's what I say for you. You're not a redneck. Wednesday night, we're going to have some Kentucky catfish for those of you that like some good fish. Now, those of you that can't eat it, well, we feel sorry for you. <laughs> That's all I can say. But we will feed you well. Uh, we got plenty of food for those that won't eat. Well, this year we've got more salads coming in. But last year, I think we had some people that... Uh, was looking for more salads to eat, and so we're going to take care of you this, uh, this year. We've got it fixed up for you. And so, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, special speakers every night, tell someone that you know about the meeting, amen? Yeah. Uh, bring them. They need to hear what, what's being said at this church. You're not going to hear this in the average church. That's right. That's right. I, uh, I believe that 
the average church today has turned to Babylon and learned that it was the golden cup in their hand. And they use Babylon's message to build a church instead of God's message. And so we're getting back to God. Amen. Tonight we have the privilege, of course, of having Brother Everett Sullivan Ramsey, and he's going to come now. And he's going to preach. A, he, he doesn't have a time limit on him. So I hope you don't have to go home too early tonight. Uh, but uh, come on, Brother Ramsey, come preach for us. And, uh, let me tell you about their books. We've got book tables next door. We want you to visit over there. Get these good books before you have an opportunity to get them. Because you won't find them other places like this. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good evening. It's good to be here. I want to say, Dr. Dixon, it's really great to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. And uh, we had many good times together. Now, Dr. McCurry, we got to see him a few months ago down in Georgia. He's not doing well. His wife just had surgery. Uh, he'll be uh, 83 this Friday, in case you want to know. And uh, I see Brother Dixon's going to be, or he's 82. So I feel like the young guy in the street at 75. You know, that's the way. And the trouble is, I came here tonight expecting to see all my old friends, and everybody here is old. And, but I don't recognize you. Is Brother Nuttall here? He was going to come, I guess. I don't see him. Uh, Brother Fletcher, thank you. You're the pastor of this church. You're the guardian of this pulpit. And uh, you're allowing me here tonight. I'll be as respectful of that as I can. And uh, I pray the Lord will give me the power and the strength to say what I need to say and to shut up when I want to say something that's not necessary. So uh, I'm thankful for this opportunity to speak at the 30th anniversary of the Louisville battle and the formation of what is now the Unregistered Baptist Fellowship. The, the Unregistered Baptist Fellowship, or the ACUC, which we called it in those days, the American Coalition of Unregistered Churches, came out of the Battle of Louisville. I had the, a videotape and the, we put it in the machine and it tore the tape up for some reason, so we don't have that to show you tonight. But we are going to convert that to a DVD and we'll make copies. I'll give Brother Dixon a copy. I think it's going to go on TV, and uh, you can watch it uh, on uh, the Internet. I want to introduce my wife tonight. Most of you knew my wife, Tressie, and we lived uh, married together for 56 years. And she got sick about six years ago and, and went downhill. She passed away early the first part of this year. And I found out, So it, I'll tell you, if you want to know the bad things about you, let your wife die, and you have to make it out on your own. Amen. I understand real quick why God looked at Adam and said, this man must not live alone. Amen. And I know how that felt. Yeah. And I asked God to give me a woman who loved the Lord and uh, knew the truth, and uh, he did. He gave me a woman that we got married in June. And uh, it's been sweet. I will have to tell you, that I got the better part of the deal. And uh, she has just been more, three or four times better than I ever anticipated that it could be. And her name is Linda. Linda, stand up over here and let folks see you. And I'm glad she can come with me. She's part of my ministry. And we're glad to have her with me. Somebody said one time, Pastor, how did you live happily with one woman for 56 years? And how have you lived this early, this long with your second wife so happy? But it's easy. You make an agreement when you get married. I agreed that I would not run her life. And I agreed that I would not run my life. <laughs> no, it's not right quite that way. But we have had a good and great time. Amen. I understand my job tonight is going to review the Louisville battle. And uh, how many of you were actually in Louisville at some time during the battle? Let's see your hand. There was. All right. What's that? All right, those of you that were there, stand up if you can and will. All right, for just a minute. All right. 
Now, thank you very much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Thank you very much. I see, I see faces, and I kind of remember your face. I may not remember your name. One of the things you have to remember is that I was in jail. My wife took care of all of our guests. <laughs> so I didn't get to meet a lot of you and then get to know you as well. But <clears throat> I was raised in Missouri, and uh, after that battle that we had, I went around the country and spoke at 800 churches in a few years, and uh, I spoke at the Catholic University of uh, America in uh, Washington, D.C. I spoke in, I don't know, 10 or 15 Assembly of God churches, all the way from Alaska down to Florida. I preached in a, in a lot of Baptist churches, preached in a lot of... Uh, I didn't get invited into the Methodist churches, except I did get in, invited to the Southern Methodists. There is a little group down south known as Southern Methodists, and they're a little more conservative. I tell people I was raised in Missouri, and, and uh, I kind of showed Linda around, and over in Little Town, Raymondville, we had a Methodist church. That's all we had. And they couldn't afford a preacher all the time. This is one of the stories I told. Some of you will remember. And... Uh, They'd have a Baptist preacher one Sunday and a Methodist preacher the next Sunday. And then the next Sunday they'd have a Baptist preacher. And on the fifth Sunday we had a great discussion. <laughs> and uh, they tell me there was a little town in southern Missouri that had a half-time, you know what, how many of you here know what a half-time church is? Any of you remember? That means they could afford a preacher half-time. That's all. Every other Sunday or every two Sundays or whatever. And the uh, Christian church had a half-time preacher, and the Baptist church had a half-time preacher. And they decided to get together and form one church. <laughs> and they had a meeting, and at the meeting, somebody stood up from the Christian churches, or Baptist church, or somewhere, and said, what are we going to call this? Baptist, uh, the Christian guy stood up and said, we're the oldest, we're the biggest, we've given the most money, we're going to call it Christian. And they said there was one Baptist deacon stood up, and he said, I'm a it." I've been a Baptist all my life, and I'm not about to become a Christian. <laughs> <coughs> so, in 1979, I accepted a call to the Faith Baptist Church in Louisville, Nebraska, for the second time. It was a town of about a thousand people. It was halfway between Lincoln, Nebraska, and Omaha, Nebraska. I want to say this before I get into this a little bit, that the people of Nebraska are a great people. They are wonderful people. When they know the Lord, they're solid people. They're people who will do whatever the pastor asks them to do usually. And we had, a, we had 17 people the very first Sunday that I went there. That included my four, me and my wife and two children. After I was there for a little while, we had a high day of over 500, and we averaged about 200 in attendance, and we built a new building. And we had what was called Old Fashioned Sunday on uh, July the 4th. And to our surprise, the mayor and his wife and his family, who were Lutherans, came to our church. And uh, the, uh, one of the councilmen, who was a Methodist, and his family came to our church. They both got saved, both got baptized, both joined our church. They were members and leaders in the, you remember the John Burke Society. And they were checking up on the schools. And they went over to the local school in Louisville, Nebraska, and asked the superintendent, we want to see the textbooks. I'm uh, one of the leaders in the Lions Club in Houston, Missouri, and a member of our Lions Club is the superintendent of schools, a young guy. And he came to me one day and he said, uh, <clears throat> Everett, he said, I want to know why you're so anti-public school. <laughs> He said, we are, I'm a Christian. And he said, we, our teachers are Christians. And we have a lot of good leaders in this school. I, and he said, why are you against us? I said, well, I'll tell you what. We'll go down to the local bar and we'll kick out the bartender and put in Christian bar.